Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we have a new product from ASUS, the Expert Wi-Fi EVM68. Fast, secure, and scalable Wi-Fi for business. And I'm really excited with this one on what it can actually do since I think this is their first series for business Wi-Fi solution. We will unbox the unit, configure, check the web management console, test the performance, and talk about the product since I'm actually using it for quite some time now. Without further ado, let us unbox the unit. Now, let me show you on how to configure these units. Okay guys, now for the configuration. And we will be using this as our first node, but regardless which one you choose, it will work the same as the main AI mesh router. And of course, we need a LAN cable coming from your source of internet connected to this EVM68. For this one, this is directly connected on our main modem router from Converge and we will be connecting this one at the back of this EVM68 and it is label 1 and plug it in there then after that one let's get our mobile device to connect to the default SSID of this Wi-Fi router okay and the default SSID for this one is the ASUS underscore 30 EVM68 connect to that one and the password for the default SSID is also located at the bottom of this Wi-Fi router. And it is actually author underscore 7377, then hit connect. Okay, and we are connected to the Wi-Fi router on the default SSID. And let's try to open the application that we have, which is, okay, it will notify you that the Wi-Fi network has no internet access connect anyway. Yes, connect on that one and go to the ASUS Expert Wi-Fi application that we have installed earlier. And this one, choose Setup. Then after that one, you'll be able to see the EVM68 to configure. Click on that one and wait for a couple of minutes for it to connect to this ASUS Wi-Fi router. Okay, after a couple of minutes, it was able to detect and connect to this one, and let's click on Get Started. Okay, system setup, if there is special requirement from your ASP, but for us, none, just click Next. Then of course, the password, let's just retain this one for now for the Wi-Fi SSID, our main Wi-Fi network, EVM68, and the wireless network password, retain it as is, and of course, we will be using Smart Connect, and we won't be separating the Wi-Fi frequency, 2.4, 5 gigahertz, and 5 gigahertz too. And click next. Then system setup, let us just configure this one later on. And after that one for the admin credentials, so let's try to enter a new one. Then hit apply. Okay, it will set up our Wi-Fi network. Let's just wait for a couple of minutes for this one to complete. Okay, and as you can see, there is an option for skipping this configuration for the network of organization. 
let's skip it for now and of course account binding makes management better but we will skip it as well and later then of course we have your good connection and these are the information that we have set earlier so keep finish and aside from that one let's go to the devices and click enable remote cancel that one for now and asus notice agree then as you can see we have one ai mesh node configured already and let us try to check the devices that are currently connected. We already have two devices connected to this Wi-Fi router. And that is how easy to configure this business EDM68 Wi-Fi router is. Early days, that was actually easy for the installation of a single load. What about adding an additional AI mesh node that comes in the two-pack system? Okay, and let's try to configure this one. And guys, we will be powering it on. Okay, and of course, I would just like to show you that on our ASUS application, there is only one EBM68, and for the AI mesh, we only have one unit. Okay, honestly, guys, that is how we would configure an additional node that comes with the two pack system. We just need to wait, and it will automatically configure itself as an AI mesh node. And there you have it guys. We have already added the additional node without doing anything, just powering on the Wi-Fi router. And there you have it. We just place this additional node on an application where there is actually a poor internet signal and you'll be able to use it as well. Or if you want, you can use a LAN cable as a wide buckle for this one. But for us, it is already configured, as you can see here, it is using the 5 GHz Wi-Fi network for its wireless backhole. Okay, guys, and what if you have an old Wi-Fi router that is actually AI mesh capable? Can you still add that one? Right now, what we have here is the XD4S Zen Wi-Fi router, and we're going to configure this as an AI mesh node as well. And going to our application, let's go to the settings, and of course, AI mesh then get started and guys we need to configure this one manually it is not uh, plug and play and it will automatically configure itself we need to configure this one on our mobile application so we are able to see send wi-fi xd4s and click on that one and the device location may be dining room and let's hit apply and of course we just need to wait again for a couple of minutes for this one to configure Okay, guys, and as you can see, it is completed. That is also easy addition of a non-business series Wi-Fi router from ASUS. And click on done, and let's try to check the devices. And as you can see here, we already have three Wi-Fi routers. One is the main Wi-Fi router or the AI mesh router, and two are the additional AI mesh node, and that's really easy to configure. After the configuration, let us see the web management console and see the difference from the other series that ASUS actually offers. Okay, guys, so right now let's try to access the web management console and enter the credentials that we have set earlier. Okay, after logging in, you will be redirected to the main dashboard. You will be able to see a lot of information regarding your Wi Fi router. Currently, we have one connection on the 5 GHz first Wi Fi frequency of the 5 GHz Wi Fi network. And of course, the 5 GHz is usually dedicated for its wireless mesh backhole. And we also have your DNS benchmark, system status, the uh, utilization of the CPU and RAM, and of course, traffic monitor as well, and Ethernet ports that are available. Okay, and aside from this one, you can actually add uh, another items in the dashboard, like for example, uh, if you want to monitor on the dashboard the AI mesh node or a specific device on the devices that are currently connected to your network, but we won't be doing that right now. And let's head back to the AI mesh. Okay, guys, for the AI mesh, this is actually a surprise. Even though this is a business Wi-Fi router, intended for business Wi-Fi router, we are still able to use a Zen Wi-Fi AI mesh router. As you can see here, the home one is the EBM68, which is our main AI mesh router. And the other EBM68 tag as office is an AI mesh node. And aside from that one, we have the Zen Wi-Fi XD4S. It's not uh, advertised as a business Wi-Fi router, 
but we can still use it as a mesh node in this business Wi-Fi setup, okay? And maybe I'll try to show you later on what are the difference if we're just be using that a regular type of Wi-Fi router compared to a business type one. Okay, and aside from this one, you have your other information, the network, and of course, the management. You can manage these devices individually if you want. And now, let's try to check system settings. Under the system settings, you have here Ethernet backhole mode. You can use the LAN cable as a wired backhole because for me, it's actually great to use a wired backhole because it is, yes, more stable compared to a wireless one. But nonetheless, this is a Triman Wi-Fi router. Not using a LAN cable as a backhole is still good because it has a dedicated wireless backhole using the second 5 GHz Wi-Fi frequency. So your speed won't be actually having any issues with the internet connection. And we also have a roaming blacklist, system factory default, and system reboot. Okay, now aside from this one, let's go to the most interesting part because this is a business Wi-Fi router and this is actually where you can create multiple Wi-Fi network or self-defined network for your guests or clients. Like for example, currently guys, we have here a one, two, three, four, five Wi-Fi network that we have created, okay? And as you can see, each profile has their specific icon. Like for example, this Annie has a employee icon, meaning this is a setup safe and secure network. Usually this uh, network is for your um, employees or administrator that you want to them to connect to this Wi-Fi network. And what are the difference if you'll be using this Wi-Fi network for your employees? Let's try to check the configuration on this one. As you can see here, there is an option like, for example, access intranet. Okay, if you have an employee connected to your Wi-Fi network, of course, you need them to access the intranet so they will be able to access maybe the media server, the inventory server, or any other servers within your corporate network. And aside from that one, we have here bandwidth limiter as well. Wi-Fi scheduling, okay, for the Wi-Fi scheduling, guys, you can create a profile on when do you want this Wi-Fi network to be available. Aside from that one, the authentication method, you can actually choose between WPA2 personal and uh, WPA3, and you can also use radio setting where if you have an authentication server that you want to implement. And we have here VPN as well. Okay, and let's try to pick this one. You can configure your VPN for this Wi-Fi network. And of course, the list of clients that are currently connected to your Wi-Fi network. And aside from that one, going back to Annie, what are the advanced settings that we can do? We have here uh, enable the HTTP server, meaning this Wi-Fi network will have a separate or a different LAN IP and it has a VLAN ID, VLAN ID 52, but you can still change this LAN IP if you want to. And aside from that one, the DNS server can also be configured here. And of course, the AI mesh node. Okay, the beauty about this one for the AI mesh node is like, for example, we have here an Wi-Fi network. I can set where this Wi-Fi network or Wi-Fi annihilation on a specific AI mesh node. Like, for example, this one is actually available on the uh, EBM home and, of course, EBM office. And, like, for example, if I'm near the Send Wi-Fi XD4S, it does not carry this any Wi-Fi network, okay? So I can change if I only want this any to be accessible at this specific AI mesh on home EVM68, you'll be able to access this any Wi-Fi network only on that specific node. Okay, and aside from that one, we have here the guest portal. Okay, this one is a different configuration. Of course, the guest portal is usually, uh, what can we check here for the guest portal at network okay. for the guest portal it will create a copy portal for digital marketing so we have here jk pre wi-fi let's try to check on this yes basically it has the same configuration like the uh employee one but let's see the difference okay the main difference of this guest portal is this has actually a guest portal window or login page like for example this one if you can uh, actually try to connect to a corporate network or maybe on a hotel. If you connect, you will be prompted by a window or a browser that you need to agree and continue. Something like that one. And this is for the guest portal. And of course, you can also have your connection timeout on how many minutes that you want this client or guest to connect to this specific Wi-Fi network. And aside from that one, you can change the terms of service if you want to. And of course, you can configure this guest portal 
lagging page. Maybe let's try to check here. And as you can see here, they're already available option for you to choose. It's really good for that one. But for us, let's try to check or create a new one for this one. So let's write this Hello Kitty. And this is the one that will appear on your client when they try to connect to this Wi-Fi network. Okay, and aside from that one, guys, the only problem with this one oh, is that even though they have already timeout connection, meaning if they have already spent the 60 minutes that you allocated to there, they can still reconnect to this Wi-Fi network. And aside from that one, you can also create a passcode for this one. Aside from just uh, agreeing to the terms of service, you can create a passcode if you want to. You can set it in here, and that's the other option. And lastly, for this guest portal, you can only use only one guest portal. If you won't be able to uh, apply this one if you create another one. Like for example, let's go to this JK2 Wi-Fi network. It is a guest portal as well. And when we click guest portal tab, the maximum number of concurrent active portal type connection is limited to one, meaning only one active portal type connection is available for all the self device network that you'll be creating. And aside from that one, you can also have here the VPN client and the network. You can actually choose if you want to give them uh, just 2.4 or 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi frequency or vice versa, just one SSID. And the Wi-Fi router will be the one responsible on allocating on where they will be connected to. And of course, you can also create a bandwidth limiter so your uh, data or bandwidth that you apply from your ISP won't be congested if there are a lot of users, okay? And aside from that one, access internet. By default, it's a guest portal. You should actually disable access to internet because it must be secured. Your internet must be secured if you have a servers and uh, inventory or media server on your own network. Okay. And we have here Wi-Fi scheduling as well for the advanced setting. It is the same. And we have here AI mesh node. As you can see, the AI mesh node, uh, this GK2 is available on two expert Wi-Fi EBM68, home and office. And let's try to check this send Wi-Fi XD4S. Okay, where is it actually configured? Okay, as you can see, the JK one-time access is only available on the send Wi-Fi XD4S. It is located in the living room, okay? So I'm not really sure if there's an issue uh, because the send Wi-Fi XD4S only have dual band capability. I'm not sure if uh, send Wi-Fi like the XD12 that has a tri-band capability will be able to get other self-defined network as well and propagate them on those locations. Okay, I'm not really sure regarding that one. Hopefully, we have one to test that as well. And aside from that one, uh, what else? For the ad network you have here, you can create your own IoT network, BPN network, and of course, scheduled network for maintenance if you want uh, someone to access your network to uh, have a maintenance on your Wi-Fi network. You can create a, this one, a sign on when it will be available and they will be able to connect to this one. And aside from that one, let's go to the VPN server again. For the VPN server, this is usually the same with the other Wi-Fi routers that we have from ASUS, which is the PPTP, OpenVPN, IPsec VPN, Wired VPN. And aside from that one, VPN creation is available as well on this EVM68. Next will be the AI protection. Guys, for the AI protection, uh, by default, it is actually disabled. I have to enable this one to make it work because I'm not really sure why it is disabled. Maybe uh, because this AI protection also consumes um, memory and CPU utilization. So maybe by default, it is turned off. But if you want it to be more secured, of course, enable this AI protection. This is actually helpful. And aside from that one, what else can we see here? Uh, Two-way IPS, yes, that is actually great. And of course, infected device prevention block. Meaning if there's a device that is infected, it will be blocked from your network, okay? And now going to the traffic monitor. Okay, under the traffic monitor, you'll be able to see here uh, the current utilization of your Wi-Fi network. Okay, and here it is. You can actually choose display for each devices or apps if you want to but this will give you information regarding the traffic on your network. And next one will be the settings. Okay, for the settings, I know what you'll be asking. Since this is a business Wi-Fi router, does it actually has a dual one capability? 
Of course, let's try to check on this one. It has a one, dual one, and it is capable of dual one uh, picture and the one type. It will be the same. So maybe let's try to check this one, dual one. Okay, let's enable and see what are the options. Yes, the one port can be used and if you want, the Ethernet LAN can use that as well. And for the secondary one, you can use a USB a modem or maybe a mobile device that you want to connect as a secondary one or even use an Ethernet LAN as well. And aside from that one, we have option for failover or load balance for our dual one. We have here a virtual server for forwarding, DMC, DNS, and that pass through. And aside from that one, let's see here a LAN IP, DHCP server. All the information or the settings that you want to configure will be available on this setting tab. Okay, we have your firewall as well and administration and adaptive QoS. Guys, adaptive QoS, this will help you a lot in uh, prioritizing the traffic that you want on your network. And it also has a internet speed, built-in internet speed to check the actual speed that this Wi-Fi router is getting. And for the QoS, maybe let's try to check this one. Uh, QoS type. Now it's uh, configured to bandwidth limiter. You can Choose adaptive QoS if you want to prioritize games, media streaming, web surfing, and so on and so forth. And aside from that one, guys, this web history is actually amazing. You'll be able to see the sites that the devices are actually accessing. Uh, but that one is only applicable if they are not using any VPN panel. So when they try directly accessing, like for example, what are the things that we see here? Uh, Edge, Microsoft, MSN you'll be able to see the traffic that they're getting. And this is for the all clients. You can actually specify which client that you want to check on which traffic or web he or she is trying to access. And as that one, administration. Okay, uh, for the administration, the operation mode. This is actually important for some. It can be a wireless router mode, an AI mesh router mode, an access point mode, or AI mesh router in AP mode. And of course, AI mesh node. And aside from that one, we have your system and firmware upgrade. Okay, guys, if you're setting this up, always try to do a system upgrade before configuring everything. And that's it for the web management console. There are a lot of features added, and we have not discussed each feature on the other tabs because it will actually take a long time to discuss. But if you want to confirm something on the features, just comment down below, and hopefully I can answer your inquiry if the unit is still with me. Now, time for the testing. First, let us test the QR code connection to see if it will work since this is usually available on coffee shops or other establishments. Wow, free Wi-Fi on JK's coffee shop. And of course, let us try to check on how we can access this Wi-Fi network without even asking the Wi-Fi SSID or for the credential for this Wi-Fi network. And of course, let's try to check my phone Guys, actually, I'm using only a Poco phone and it has a scanner, a QR scanner on Wi-Fi connection. Let's try to check this one and, of course, Wi-Fi and more settings. And as you can see here, we have here a scanner icon. I'll try to click on that one. Okay, and as you can see, it is actually trying to check or it has opened the camera to scan the QR code. <laughs> Guys, that was quick. It's just a glimpse and as you can see, we are already connected to that JK pre Wi-Fi, but of course, it requires authorization, meaning that we have enabled that guest portal for this QR code. And we just need to click this one. And after that, it will open the portal, guest portal, and it has the Welcome to our Wi-Fi service and everything. We just need to have to tick this one. I have read and agree to the terms of services. Then let's click continue. Okay, and after that one, we are already connected and let's try to check if we can access the internet. So maybe let's try to open a web browser and okay, I'm looking for a power bank. Okay, and maybe let's try to test this one. And we are already connected to the JK Pre Wi Fi. Okay, the problem with this one, guys, is that not all mobile phones has a 
QR scanner to connect to a Wi-Fi network. I even tried um, my Huawei P30 Pro and it doesn't have any QR scanner built in. I tried to download but it actually won't work to connect directly to this one. So it is a based on your mobile devices that if they have actual capability of connecting by a QR scanner. That works great and this also works with other self-defined network configuration that has a security password configured. Now, let us test the actual performance of an individual node. Check on how far it can give us wireless connectivity. Okay guys, for the initial test, we are just standing in front of the EVM68 and let's try to check that where we are currently connected. We are connected to the ANI. This is for our employee portal and let's try to check that we are currently connected to the 5 GHz Wi-Fi frequency for Now, for this test, we will be using 5 GHz Wi-Fi frequency and of course, let's do a speed test. Okay, where is our speed test? Hmm, okay. And we are connected by Converge. We have 500 Mbps of bandwidth from Converge ISP. Okay, and currently we are getting 429 Mbps for download while 265 Mbps for upload on the baseline testing. Let's try to move to another room. Okay guys, still on the any Wi-Fi network, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi network, and let's do a speed test again on this location. Okay, and currently we are able to get 417 Mbps for download while 155 Mbps for upload. Now let's try to move downstairs. Okay, we still have Wi-Fi connection or Wi-Fi network from any just to make sure, let's try to check our settings. We are connected to Annie and we are still connected to 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi network. Okay, and for the speed test, let's test again. Okay, as you can see, we are able to get 102 Mbps for download while 35.4 for upload. And now, let's try to move on the roof deck. Okay guys, and we are now on the roof deck and let's try to check our connection. We are still connected to Annie and of course, still 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi frequency. And let's try to check if we can still perform speed test on this location. Okay, and we are still able to complete a speed test on the roof deck on the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi frequency with a 3 0.55 for download while 0.49 for upload. Okay guys, and we are still here on the roof deck but we have reconfigured our EVM68 to only broadcast the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi frequency on ANI. Let's try to confirm that one. We are connected to ANI and as you can see, we have a pull signal that is connected on the second floor and as you can see, we are on 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi frequency. And let's try to do a speed test. Okay, earlier for the 5 GHz Wi-Fi frequency, we are only getting 3.55 Mbps for download while 0.49 Mbps for upload. And let's hit test again. Okay guys, as you can see, it is more than double for the download around maybe nine times the download or eight times the download that we we're getting earlier from the 5 gigahertz wi-fi frequency and for the upload guys it's 38 mbps compared to the 0.40 something mbps a while ago so having the 2.4 gigahertz wi-fi frequency is still good if you're actually far away from the wi-fi router and of course let's try to check again on the ground floor as well Okay guys, and we are now on the ground floor, still on the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi frequency. And let's try to check if we will be getting more than 32 Mbps and 38 Mbps for download, for upload, than on the roof deck. Okay, let's test again. Okay guys, as you can see, we are getting more download speed and upload speed here on the ground floor because this is much easier to 
uh, access the Wi-Fi on the second floor than on the roof deck. And it is still a good performance on the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi frequency. And there you have it guys, the range performance is great, definitely able to compete with the other ASUS Wi-Fi routers that we have tested before. For the AI mesh nodes, we are able to have a good connection as well, but there is just a minor issue and hopefully this can be addressed on a firmware upgrade in the near future. And that is the 5-2 Wi-Fi frequency. It is actually not being utilized as a dedicated backhaul. Here is the image that it is always using the 5-1 Wi-Fi frequency as a wireless backhaul. No one is using the 5-2 Wi-Fi network. And of course, we tested as well if we are not running or using Smart Connect. Same issue. Backhaul 5-2 is not being utilized as well as a backhaul. And we even have set a dedicated backhaul for the 5-2. And still, not working. Okay? And just to make sure that the 5-2 Wi-Fi network is working, we try to connect some mobile devices on that 5-2 network. And as you can see, it shows that these devices are connected to that 5-2 Wi-Fi network, but the wireless backhaul is still using 5-1 Wi-Fi network. Now let us try to play games. If it will perform great for this test, we will be using a single node located on the second floor on this location. And first test would be on the master's bedroom with the door closed and as you can see we are getting a good network performance mostly single digit with some spikes of less than 20 and guys that is still a great network performance for your online games of course we have tried to play on the ground floor as well while still connected to the guest network here on the second floor and we are still having a great gaming experience for using the other AI mesh nodes, it works smoothly as well and maybe a minor issue if you want to use that third one as a dedicated map hole as what we have discussed and we will discuss that one later on. But nonetheless, its AI mesh capability works great, still smooth with gaming and gives you better Wi-Fi coverage. Now for my conclusion and verdict, the EBM68 or other business-oriented Wi-Fi routers from ASUS is relatively new and there are things that needs to be improved first is for the ebm68 it is actually a tri-band wi-fi router and the third band 5-2 wi-fi network is not being used as a dedicated backhaul for now maybe it's just a glitch or maybe the unit that i have have some issues but i have confirmed this on asus customer hotline that it should show 5-2 as a wireless backhaul on the application and have tried to raise it to customer support. Maybe I'll try to include or uh, an information on the description below if there is already an available firmware or if there are any issue with my test unit. And guys, you know why I love ASUS Live and Wi-Fi router? The ability of that third one as a wireless backhaul, it is like using a LAN cable as a backhaul. And it might be actually better because of the bandwidth allocated to that third band. Second is guest portal timeout. I'm not sure if it is just me, but I believe when you set a connection timeout for a guest or customer, they should not be able to reconnect because it actually defeats the purpose of allocating a connection timeout to these devices. If they want to reconnect, and maybe it should be for another day like in some coffee shops that they are implementing and maybe this is actually intended just to remind the customer that they are already overstaying on the shop for more than an hour if that is the case i just really want to have a feature that will allow customers to connect only once and refresh at the end of the day and i think that is most of the concern that i have right now for the good things about these business routers, the range is definitely great and network performance is great as well as what we have seen on the actual test. And we have tried another test just to make sure it can actually handle a lot of devices since this is intended for business. I have placed it on our Rise store and guys, it can handle a lot of devices simultaneously. And as you can see, we have more than 150 devices that were able to connect to this Wi-Fi router and it did not even hang or encounter any issue. Okay, for my rating, I believe even with those things that is improvement, I will still give it up for 
star. You might say, why not five star? It performs great. Yes, it performs great. But we are reviewing this EBM68 as a business router and not a gaming or a regular router. And I have expectation from this kind of business Wi-Fi routers. Then some might say, why not lower than four if there are things missing? Guys, for a regular consumer who wants to set up this kind of network service to customer, this is really easy to use and understand. I'm just comparing it to the PFSense that I have. Yes, that actually offers a lot of features, but to make it work, you really need to study and give time to understand the configuration. So ASUS actually nailed this one for this Nest Wi-Fi router. Hopefully, there will be a lot of features that can be added on the future. And for the performance, yes, it just works great. And guys, I think that will be all for now. If you have comment and suggestion, comment down below or message me at JK Chavez on FB. Again, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Stay safe and bye.